Good morning, um, my name is Mark Dawling and I'm the Digital Schoolhouse Coordinator here at Langley Grammar School. The purpose of this video is to teach you a magic trick. The aim of the magic trick is to teach children, Key Stage 2, Key Stage 3, the importance of accuracy of instructions, the idea that um, a magic trick is a sequence of instructions, so if they don't give the instructions correctly or they don't follow the instructions correctly, then the magic trick doesn't work. Additional benefits to this is that it teaches children the idea of repeats and you can also do it in Key Stage 3 to teach the idea of uh, subroutines. Now what we do is we relate this to a literacy task which is to um, write out the instructions as you do it, so using all those really good uh, connective words, time connectives, first, then, next, etc, sequencing of instructions. We also get children to write out the, um, the magic trick using a flow diagram. And the benefit of this is that it gives them something real, something kinesthetic that they can do to create their flow diagram on. And then they can give the flow diagram to somebody else uh, to, to follow and have a go at. So let's get started then. So at the moment I've picked up all the cards. As you can see, I've picked up all the 7s, 8s, 9s and 10s. The first task is to ask the children, um, for example, we're going to base this on Harry Potter, where does Harry Potter go to school? And they will say, Hogwarts. At this point, we say, well, who's the headmaster at Hogwarts? Okay, they will say, Dumbledore. And then I say to them, okay, and what year do you start um, secondary school in, in Hogwarts? And they will say, year sevens. So I say, okay, all the seven cards are going to relate to year sevens, all the eight cards are going to relate to year eight, all the year nine cards are going to relate to the year nines, and all the year 10s are going to relate to the 10 cards. I then say, well, what happens on the first day of school when they arrive at Hogwarts? And they will say, the um, children go into the Grand Hall and then they're placed into houses. So I then ask them to, to remind me, what are the houses in Harry Potter? So they will say, Gryffindor, uh, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw. I then say, how many houses do you notice there are in our, get our card trick? And they will say, well, there's four, so each one will relate to a different house. So the first thing we do is we say, OK, we're going to separate out these cards into different houses. And we do that by literally just placing them in a pile, like so. And whilst they're doing that, we can then say to them, OK, the backstory is that Harry Potter... Um, is at, at uh, Hogwarts, the idea that Professor Dumbledore uh, would like to organise a house meeting for the latest Quidditch match. However, Professor Dumbledore knows that at the end of the meeting all the children are going to be moving around school very quickly and um, there could be accidents on the moving stairs, so he wants to use magic to get them back to their classes as quickly as possible. So the first thing we do is we ask the children once they've done that to put the cards into an order, 10, 9, 8, 7. Now this is the first opportunity if you're teaching Key Stage 3 to run a subroutine or to create a subroutine for, for flow diagrams, like so. And the reason is that obviously you're repeating. With children doing it in Key Stage 2, we tend to just say to them, okay, write the procedures out, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, and then we say to them, okay, write the word repeat so many times until all the cards are done. You know, try and keep it nice and simple. Now, by getting the audience involved, okay, by asking the children to get the audience involved, so for example, you know, who is Professor Dumbledore, what's the school, etc., what you're actually doing is you're getting audience participation, so you're making it interactive. Now, we teach this mag magic trick when teaching our creative writing and scratch lesson. So what does a good computer game have to be? The first thing, it has to be interactive. So you're kind of explaining to the children why computer games are good and you're relating it to the idea of literacy and writing. So for this whole um, sequencing um, of instructions. What we then do is we then um, ask the children to pick the cards up. So 10987 and then pick up 10987 but this time the black pile. Then we pick up a red pile. Okay, so actually that one should have been there, and this one should have been there. A red pile, and then we pick up a black pile, like so. 
Now, once we've done that, we turn over the cards, and again we ask for a victim or a volunteer to come out of the audience to help with the magic trick. We joke about the fact that if the magic trick goes wrong, you can then obviously blame it on your volunteer. And at that point, um, we ask the children to tell us what the magic words are in um, Harry Potter, and they will say, Expelliarmus. So I will say, what do you say? Smelly armpit. Fair enough. Again, what we're doing is we're taking an original story and we're adapting it to suit the purpose of our magic trick. So we're being creative, you know, we're teaching children they don't have to recreate games on the computer exactly how they've seen them. Let's be creative, let's be imaginative, let's come up with our own story. So once we've done that, one, two, three, say it like you mean it, and you say, smelly armpits. We then get the children to cut the cards three times. Now they must make sure they pick up all the cards and place it on top. If they start picking up a few of the cards, it will go wrong. So you must make sure they pick up all the cards and place it on top. They then do that the second time and place it on top. And then they do it the third time and place it on top. Again, you can get them to tap the cards three times, smelly armpits, and so on and so forth. Then what you do is you pick up the cards face down this time and what you do is you turn the cards over in a particular order in a sequence so now we're going top left top right bottom left bottom right and the kids will go hmm okay that's good and then we go for a second time top left top right bottom left bottom right this tends to be the wow factor like whoa I can't believe that just happened third time and then fourth time. And what you'll notice is we have a pile of eights, we have a pile of sevens, we have a pile of tens, and we have a pile of nines. You know, and they are suitably wowed by that. Now, that whole re, uh, repeat sequence where the children have got to go top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Again, at Key Stage 3, you can relate that to the idea of, um, to the idea of uh, subroutines. Now, you don't have to just do it on Harry Potter. You can also do this uh, related to, for example, the Jacks, Queens, Kings and Aces. And what we've done recently is we've worked with Hampton Court Palace um, to relate this uh, game, this idea of sequencing, to the uh, Henry VIII era and the idea that obviously um, that the aces are like the jesters and you've got the kings, the queens and the jacks and it's a court idea and obviously um, you know you can relate it into that they're, they're at a dance or you know moving between different rooms and so on and so forth and the, and the children love it and it's just an, an idea for how to integrate computing or as we would know it in, in primary school, computer control, into the creative curriculum, whilst also kind of concentrating on those really important literacy skills and, and actually math skills, because, you know, we find in the digital schoolhouse uh, increasingly that children, you know, at maybe years three, four and five and six, don't actually play cards or handle cards anymore. So it's those skills that they, they need to, to learn. Now, just very quickly before you go, um, I just want to show you these two are two options. We've recently bought some A4 size playing cards, which obviously you can use standing at the front of the class. These are particularly good um, for demonstrating. And also, we've got some A5 cards, so half of an A4, as you can see. And these are particularly good if, um, if children have fine motor problems and can't use uh, the, the, these cards here. Now lots of children will perform the trick, they will learn the trick and the number of children that actually at their end of year school production, you know, talent show or the Christmas talent show will uh, show the trick um, as part of that. If you want to email the Digital Schoolhouse at dsh at lgs.slough.sch.uk or email us through our online email form at www.digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. We would love to hear of how you've adapted this idea to uh, your creative curriculum. But also, um, if you could video it, then we would love to display some of the videos um, on our website 
um, as inspiration to other teachers uh, locally, nationally and internationally.